Contact strength is a largely confusing term in climbing. Unlike something like max hangs on a hangboard, which is a pretty clear-cut concept at this point, I've heard all kinds of differing opinions on contact strength, and that's no good for us science nerds. We need consistency and repeatability in order to reach useful conclusions. So is there actually one science-based explanation of contact strength, or is it just another climbing slang term that no one can agree on? Today, we find out. What is contact strength? This is contact strength. Contact strength is the ability to make really small holds feel really good. Boom, incredible. Do you see that one arm pull up right there? The girl's a prodigy. The ability to contract and hold the hold with as much like force is possible, if that makes sense. Contact strength is how efficient your contacts are at correcting your vision. Your car hits the other car and you ram it forward. If you can control me, hit it, I'm telling you, we're gonna make a, yeah. we're gonna but I don't a think fucking nurse so. with this. I don't agree with that. When you, I don't agree with that. 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 Excuse me, sir. What is contact strength? Sorry, kid. I don't talk politics. In case you haven't noticed, we're trying out a new format today with the hopes of delivering the information in an even clearer style, so let us know what you think. Now, let's dive into the research to see if we can figure out one true definition of contact strength. This first article is titled, Differences in Climbing Specific Strength Between Boulder and Lead Rock Climbers. And in it, the author says, as pointed out by Watts et al., contact strength is defined as the ability to quickly grasp a hold and grip to it. This sounds perfect. Uh, it actually has nothing to do with contact strength and never mentions it again. Okay, no worries. Let's just pull up the research article by Watts et al. You know where they pull the information from? All right, there you go. So that only shows the, the abstract. I need the, the full article. Well, it's from 1996, and the full article is nowhere to be found online, and the abstract doesn't mention contact strength at all, so. Okay, so in summary, crazy as it may seem, there isn't a single research article that we could find that provides a solid definition of contact strength. Looks like we're gonna have to try a different approach. Let's see if some of the prominent members in the climbing training community can lend us any insight. Steve Bechtel refers to contact strength as one's ability to grasp a hold with maximum strength on contact. The Rock Climbers Training Manual calls it the amount of force you can generate during the period of initial contact with the hold. Eric Horst says it's the initial grip strength upon touching a handhold directly related to the rate of force development in the finger flexor muscles. And the Power Company says contact strength is the rate of force development in the finger flexors. Okay, so it seems like there's a general consensus that contact strength has something to do with the amount of force you can produce when you grab a hold. There were also a couple of mentions of this term rate of force development, which they say is closely related to contact strength. There are multiple research articles that mention rate of force development, or RFD. The first article on RFD we'll look at is called Four weeks of finger grip training increases the rate of force development and the maximal force in elite and top world ranking climbers. Catchy and concise. <laughs> and in this experiment, the researchers looked at how a specific type of training would affect the RFD of their athletes' fingers. They instructed the subjects to hold a force measuring device as strongly as you can and as fast as possible. The researchers felt this method was important, stating, as the typical time needed during a bouldering event will always be shorter than the time needed to achieve maximal force, increasing the RFD is therefore a crucial way to increase performance. Basically, because we have such a short window of time to generate force when we grab a hold, it's important we can generate force quickly. This second article titled, Rate of Force Development and Maximal Force, Reliability and Difference Between Non-Climbers, Skilled, and International Climbers. Another banger! <laughs> has some really interesting info for us. They discuss the fact that climbers have very little time to grip strongly during dynamic movements. 
this ability to develop a high level of force in a short amount of time, that is the rate of force development, RFD. Again, we're seeing this concept of RFD pop up, which appears to be very similar to our rough definition of contact strength. So this all sounds great, but how is it different from regular old finger strength? The key to understanding RFD is to realize how short of a time frame we're talking about. Because the time frame is so small, the way our bodies produce and modulate force is a bit more nuanced than you might think. Popping back to the first article real quick, they state that the first 200 milliseconds of developing force is due to an increase in the motor unit discharge and contractile impulse, while the second part of the RFD is linked closely to changes in tendon muscle coupling and to the contractile properties of the muscle. Basically, in the first 200 milliseconds of engagement, your strength is mostly limited by neural factors. After 200 milliseconds, the limiting factor is the actual strength of the tendons and muscles. To make things a bit clearer, let's do a little experiment with the crane scale. This crane scale will measure the force we can generate with our fingers multiple times per second and record all that data to my computer. First, Emil and I are going to measure our maximal force. So according to the research article, that measurement was mostly limited by the contractile strength of our muscles. Now we're gonna try and generate as much force as we can in the shortest amount of time. Okay, that time we got totally different values when we look at specific moments in time. That's because according to the article, the amount of force we can generate in the first fraction of a second has a lot more to do with the neural factors than pure strength. The rate at which you develop force is of course limited by the maximum strength of your fingers, but the rate is not necessarily determined by only that strength. In other words, you can't produce 50 pounds of force in two seconds if your max strength is 40 pounds. On the other hand, just because your max strength is 40 pounds does not mean you'll be able to generate all 40 pounds in two seconds. Now let's see if we can answer our original question at the start of this video. So is there actually one science-based explanation of contact strength? Answer, yes, I believe so. While the term contact strength does not seem to have much or any scientific backing, the concept of contact strength certainly does. Contact strength essentially refers to the rate of force development in the fingers. Interestingly, this rate is determined not only by your absolute strength, but also by the efficiency of your neural connections, particularly in the first 200 milliseconds of engagement with a hold. In other words, contact strength is a measure of tissue strength and neurological speed. Amazing. Okay, contact strength sounds pretty cool, but exactly how important is it for climbers? Like, should I be training regular strength or focusing on contact strength to advance my climbing? That's an excellent question, and it's what we'll be covering in part two of this contact strength series, which will be coming out after this video. Finally, we'll also have a part three, which will cover how to train contact strength. So many good videos in the works. That's gonna be it for this video. If you found it helpful or at least mildly entertaining, consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing. Until next time, train all your friends to use the correct definition of contact strength, climb your proj knowing that none of them care, send them a handwritten note asking for forgiveness, and repeat, but this time, try citing more articles. Better. Reliability and difference between non-skilled climber, oh, darn it, and is defined as the ability to, oh gosh, the capacity. <laughs> but how is it different from regular old finger, 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 finger strength? Increase in the motor unit discharge in contractile, 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 darn it. Increase in the motor unit discharge in con, contractile, I can't answer? Yes, I do believe so. That was kind of stop. I do believe so. Dude, say something cool so they like the videos and subscribe for more awesome content. Um, like and subscribe for more super sweet vids, y'all. So lame, dude. So lame. I thought it was pretty good.